hi guys I am back with part two of the painting shadow series so last time we did indoor shadows and I thought today we would do some outdoor shadows we had these gorgeous sort of sunlit patches across the lawn and the leaves are turning here so we're getting these gorgeous autumnal colors it's a really nice time of year we're getting the, like the nice cool breeze and um, so I thought it would be really nice to kind of look at some more natural uh, shadows this time for, th for this video. So we're going to look at uh, how to, first of all, how to create some neutral colours and then we're going to look at the kind of the colours that I like to use for um, shadows and then we're going to create some cool and some warm shadows. And as always, there'll be some little snippets of um, like the dip pen will make an appearance. Here's the ethograph. So I'm trying that out a little bit, bit by bit. Um, you can see this poor rose. So I had two roses left on um, the bushes and I, I chose this one because I thought it would make some really nice shadows. Um, so it's not doing very well, but the... Uh, we get to work with it in the end and I also wanted to talk about a couple of new things and kind of updates in the shop and things like that and also just like where I've been and why I haven't been able to upload a bit more so we, we will get into all that later on but I am really excited uh, about this video and this whole series I'm kind of starting to think and plan for next year as well so I think that every month we'll do something about painting shadows. We do like florals and mixes and um, when we get to, so I have quite a few, you know, plenty of videos to catch us up to December and I was thinking we'll do December daily if I can um, with a week of tinsel, a week of stars and then the 12 days of Christmas. So I am excited if I can get that going. but let's get into today's video I've rambled on a bit uh, we are just looking at here so I've got this old kind of booklet of swatches and um, things that I compiled and uh, you can see here some of the mixes some of my favorite sort of gray or neutral mixes I actually find it quite hard to find a, a neutral mix that I really love so I'll go over some today but I I think it's really a uh, something of continued exploration and if you guys have any favorite mixes for um, you know neutral uh, cool grays or warm grays or kind of taupey colors let us know in the comments I don't know if I say this enough but I absolutely love your recommendations for colors and uh, supplies when there are sales and everything like that it's so nice um, that we get to kind of combine our experiences and share the love of painting. I just, I always um, want you to know how much the comments mean to me. So it's really kind. So here is uh, the new palette. I've been putting this together for mm, quite a few months now, maybe five months. So it is almost, well, it's complete, but I'm not sure I'm going to keep all these colors, but I do want to swatch them out because you guys might like some of these colors so next week I've got one more um, video for the shadows filmed and then next week I will swatch this out for you and so this is one of the reasons that I have been a little bit um, busy I have been working on these journals for heirloom Lux over on the other channel but uh, what was I saying yeah we'll swatch this out after so next week and then we will do a video on how to not overwork your painting so I've been I've had this request a few times and I think um, it's a good time to start that so uh, you can see here some of my smoky mixes these are some of the ways that I really like to um, some of the mixes I like to mix for shadows so if you look at the how to make smoky mixes or how to make dusty mid mixes videos you'll be able to find some of my favorite ways to mix these colors as well and then right on cue we get this beautiful shadow come through the windows perfect timing <laughs> so first of all we're going to look at some of 
uh, so this is an old sketchbook from a few years ago and I did a lot of color swatching and color mixing in this sketchbook so this is the Jane Davenport one I think I got uh, from Michaels and there is there's a whole page in here about mixing neutrals and what I found was it was quite tricky to find neutrals that I really liked at this point and I was also kind of trying to mix the darkest uh, sort of black mix that I could so I found that I could do that with like an indigo and um, brown iron oxide so like the darkest blue and the darkest brown that you have will create quite a good uh, dark sort of uh, inky color but I was kind of after some more and different shades like that so you can actually look up on YouTube how to mix neutrals as well and you'll find some really good videos but here I have a video I'll actually link it below and I swatched these and then dipped it in water and re-swatched it I would add a bit of the other color and then dip it in water and swatch add a bit of the color dip it in water and so um, you can create these beautiful color mixing color spectrum charts which are really nice as well but I actually found I created this sugalite and pearl white mix and then I was totally head over heels for that color and I thought this is the kind of um, really pale shadow that color that I would like to kind of use and um, mix so I kind of have steered towards that a little bit so if I haven't mentioned already the way that you try and get these neutral colors or get colors to neutralize is to mix the opposite colors on the color wheel so sometimes that's a bit tricky because you're using kind of tertiary colors um, and so you kind of have to play around as well sometimes even though they're opposites the mix that you get the color tone that you get from that mix might not be exactly right for your painting so I like to kind of try a few different mixes and have a few different um, shades in my mind that I can use you know for a more uh, blue tone or a more cool tone or um, things like that like this first one is one of my favorite uh, mixes and this is shell pink and fuchsite and so if you don't sort of mix an enough ratio of each you, you're going to end up with more of a green tint in the shadow which I don't really like and then if you mix it um, pretty equally you get quite a nice cool gray but it still has a slight greenish tint then if you put a little bit more shell pink in it mixes a little bit more towards a, um, a beige undertone shadow and that's kind of like one I really like as well so I like the spectrum on these two colors it gives you quite a nice variety of different um, types of neutrals and then similarly I like to mix it with the Holbein Brilliant Pink so that's the Holbein Shell Pink and the Daniel Smith Fuchsia and then this is the Holbein Brilliant Pink and this on neutralizes I would say a little bit better um, and again it's just another uh, pretty way to mix a neutral it's fairly similar but it's a little bit deeper in tone so you can see there I really like that as well so I would suggest you know just taking the colors that you have and the colors that you really enjoy as well these are two of my favorite colors sort of on opposite spectrum so it's not um, sort of a true green it's not really a true pink and they mix really well and now uh, we have the so I'm gonna I've actually never done this but I've heard that you can create sort of use a trio like a primary trio to make to mix a black so we're going to use we use the cobalt blue um, Daniel Smith Rodenite and French ochre maybe to try and create a neutral and I couldn't I didn't really get it to a black color here so I'm not really sure if I would need like a deeper blue and a stronger sort of red um, but I do love these tones 
So let's try this again. I use the cobalt blue again with the, or maybe I use indigo this time actually. Indigo with the road night and the roasted French ochre. So instead of the yellow, I'm putting an ochre in and instead of the ochre, I'm now putting in a deeper brown. So here instead of using a traditional purple and an orange I'm using Holbein Lilac and Daniel Smith Sedona which is kind of a more pinky brown more towards the orange spectrum like a burnt sienna and that's one of my favorite mixes and I really enjoy like this type of a color to add shadows or color notes. So again, going with the purple and orange, I'm using Amethyst and um, by Daniel Smith and Jean Brie number no. two by Holbein. And you can see how the, these are again a different take on a purple and orange and you get a different effect there. So this is why you can, um, you know, you really want to investigate your paints and what you can get from them. So you, you know, trying a different variety of um, these you know opposite colors and you will find different varieties of color tones for the shadow shadows So here I'm just going to show you a few examples of how I like to paint shadows. So I generally tend towards a lighter first wash and you can see here like I tried to add a darker shade and I just wasn't happy with it. So I always kind of gravitate towards these lighter first washes and I think that that's one of the ways 
as well if you're looking to not overdo a painting is start lightly and then just build up a small portion of um, the painting in like true dark shadows so again you can see here like um, this is from the smolt video and very soft shadows this is the cobalt violet one so on a lot of these color spotlights we have done some shadow work and so you'll be able to watch those and see a little bit differently how I've um, implemented different shadows into different color schemes and this spoon this is one of my favorite uh, paintings where the shadows worked out really well and I that was just uh, totally due to the granulation of the pigment it just it worked really beautifully and sometimes that's the magic you know you kind of try different things and sometimes it just turns out really perfectly so you can see these are some pieces from a few years ago and this was when uh, again I still wasn't sure about shading I wasn't sure how dark to take things so I just started lightly um, I am not one to kind of finish the painting just because if I get stuck I'm happy to just kind of stop and wait and see what happens so you can see here on the white walls instead of creating the white I did soft washes of like blues mixed with pinks to get these kind of uh, soft uh, dusty inky colors So this was one of my favorite pages as well so I was trying shadows here and I used a Daniel Smith amethyst and you can see that I've just kind of replicated the shape of the cup and I tilted a little bit and enlarged it and that gave that really nice um, shadow and then here um, so we've talked about this in the blue egg uh, you know in the blues mix and th those I really enjoyed creating those shadows um, again it, it's trial and error it's kind of you know seeing what works and what doesn't and you can see here so this cup I did no shadows on and you can kind of feel the lack of it 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 takes a little bit of life out of the painting but I think I'll show you here I'm I think I'm looking for the orchid uh, painting and the um, there's another one what was it the viola so kind of what I've started doing is that five to ten to fifteen percent of the painting I try and use some really darker shadows to try and create a little bit more of that 3d but I don't want it to overpower the the softer colors so you can watch those two videos and um, see a little bit more how I do that I really don't want too many dark lines so I change I switch brushes to a very fine small brush and just lightly add in uh, little tiny bits of the darkest values okay so I hope that all made sense and now we're going to talk about some of my favorite colors to use for shadows Okay, so the first color that I always love, and I really just pull this out all the time if I'm not sure um, which way to lean the color shadow. So this is just a nice cool gray. This is Daniel Smith Moonstone. It's a sparkly gray, so I just really love it. Um, you can add other colors to it and it goes sort of holographic. It's really pretty. So this is the Sugalite, Daniel Smith Sugalite. I really love this. I, this is a long time staple in my palette. And then you can see I mix it with the white and it becomes this really soft shimmer. The next color is Potter's Pink and I use the Winsor & Newton version. I really love it. And um, I know a lot of you like the Schmincke version, so I will have to try that at some point. Uh, but I've really been enjoying and when you mix it with pearl white you get this gorgeous sort of pink champagne color it's one of my favorites so um, uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more later on as well I really love it 
And I probably say that I really love it because I really love all of these mixes. So I try and only show you my favorites. So things that I have, you know, I might have gone over hundreds of mixes, but I really want to condense down and give you my top favorites. So this next one is Kaput Mortuum by Windsor & Newton. So I talked about this in my Daniel Smith, um, the new Daniel Smith watercolors recent video. And I was looking for um, a replacement for the Porphyry Violet Ochre by C Colors of the Iron Range. So I absolutely love the Porphyry Violet. I love her shop. It's a really gorgeous one. I'll link it below. But um, if you can't get that one, then this Kaput Mortuum is a pretty good um, one instead. And I absolutely love it when you mix it with white. So I use the Grumbacker White. Let me try and catch up here. So uh, in the middle there is the Fuchsite and Shell Pink. And you can see there when it's um, put on the page, not next to those two, it looks nothing like it's come from either one of them. It's just this really nice cool grey. And then we have Hematite Violet. So I have this in my new palette, which I'll swatch. And then uh, I've added white to that as well. And I saw in Irit's video, she also added the white to it. And yeah, it's a really gorgeous combination. So we also, then we have Lunar Violet, which is again in the new palette. And I've been really loving this one. So especially the Lunar Violet and the Hematite Violet make kind of my perfect shadow violet so uh, and then i've add i've used that mix of both and i've added that white to it so when i use the shadow violet i really love it i really love the color um, sometimes when i add it in paintings the blue settles out of it and it doesn't always match with you know the color tones in my painting so I wanted something that I could find that similar tone but without the blue and this is perfect the lunar violet and the hematite violet you can make something like that with a granulating black a little bit of a purple and a little bit of a brown as well and now um, the next one was the hematite violet and potter's pink and the last one was the indigo and potter's pink so they're kind of two new mixes and some of my favorites now as well So now we're going to put some colors in to use in some paintings and I'll show you kind of some of my go-to uh, colors and how I implement shadows. Um, I hope you guys are still with me. I know this is a long video. I know that some of you like long videos so um, I did want to kind of take my time and hopefully you enjoy this. Um, but you can see this is a really old uh, book. Uh, so from like maybe 2013 or somewhere around there and this is where I kind of started to play with shadows and you can see here so I did these pairs and I used um, a totally different kind of did what I said in the last video just used a completely unusual color to mix with the sort of green gold of the pair I mean, and it's nothing really special, but at the time, it was a real sort of freeing experience for me, um, just the fact that there are these possibilities available, and I really loved it. So I thought about that, and I think today, so we're going to paint a couple of pairs. Now, they're not going to be sort of anything, these are just small colour studies, so... Uh, we're just basically using green gold. This is Daniel Smith green gold and um, a bit of French ochre to tone it down a little bit. 
and just creating the body of the pear so I'm leaving I'm just, I'm just sort of sketching it out lightly with my paintbrush leaving a little bit of highlights as the you know the white of the paper there leaving that as a highlight so the highlights on the left which means the shadows will be on the right and I am just dropping in some more sort of uh, French ochre and just darkening and deepening up that side of the pear some of this I will just let you watch uh, unless I have anything to add. So here I start to add some Daniel Smith Sedona. So what I'm doing is adding, so this is sort of adding warm shadows and I know that a lot of the colours that I um, swatched there are more cool toned shadows. So when I want a warm tone shadow, I generally go towards Daniel Smith Sedona or uh, Potter's Pink. And I'm not an expert on any of this, but what I generally like to do is add some of the uh, shadow color in with the colors that I'm using for the actual painting. So if I am using the green gold, I will add a bit of the Sedona in to that mix. And then I'm basically really lightly um, with a light wash of the Sedona I am creating the shadow and you can see there at the base of the pear there was see there's like I just pulled that highlight there out sometimes shadows do have a highlight there instead of uh, making it deeper I've tried to sort of get some footage of that um, this week but I haven't sort of been able to but when I do I'll do a whole nother video and kind of show that because you know as much as deepening that line there and the crease and uh, creating the 3d effect that way sometimes there is actually a sort of a pool of light in the middle of the shadow and so the other thing i wanted to say here is you can see that i am just lightly touching the color and moving it around so there's absolutely no scrubbing of the paper here um, you know sometimes when you you know move the pigment too much it can kind of um, damage the paper or um, just sort of it doesn't work right so I just generally like to lightly um, move the pigment around okay so we are on our second pair so we're starting it out the same way with the green gold and French ochre mix and instead of using warm tone shadows, we're now going to use cool tone shadows and see how that affects the finished painting. So you can see here we have started out with the same pair but they both look completely different so you can see what the shadow color can do for the painting it's going to create such a different mood just based on the shadows which you wouldn't even think is necessarily a major part of the painting but it really has the ability to sort of transform the painting to our third and final pair we're doing this again the same start but this time I want to just experiment so 
this is part of i guess knowing when you want to take um risks with your painting sometimes you've got to take risks and just see so it's not necessarily a matter of overworking your painting but you're kind of purposefully overworking it to see what does work and what doesn't and it's really good to do it in these just small kind of studies so this time i want to add fuchsite uh, which is you know isn't one of my favorites and also i'm using hematite for the stems by the way but um, so we use fuchsite and then I think I want to add some rhodonite and the potter's pink and pearl mix. So it's the potter's pink and pearl white. So I always write it down as pearl just for um, <laughs> to annotate it quickly. But um, yeah, so we work with the rhodonite and the that mix and I actually don't mind it so as far as it goes you can see i quite like this sort of shadow color and if i had have just used the potter's pink in the pear as well um probably more with a bit of sedona then it would have been quite nice but what i'm just doing here is just pushing the boundaries and you know i'm not sure how these colors will work so i'm just trying things out in the end, I think if I had have stuck with a uh, fuchsite and more of a taupe color, um, then it would actually be a really beautiful finished pair, like maybe the uh, Nibs Pens and Inks Katya or Dawn, something like that would have been quite pretty. Um, but you know, because I'm just kind of playing with this one and um, thinking about you know possible color. Uh, things it kind of ends up a little bit of a mess but that's all right because that's part of it I'm purposefully overworking this I want to just explore a few different color options and I think one of the things is kind of objectively critiquing your own work so not saying not um, diminishing your work and saying oh that was just bad I, I just can't paint I you know I'm not even going to bother trying again but sort of saying oh yeah I can improve in this area and this color didn't really work so you know I'll, I'll try it this way I think I've found over the years that kind of just because we cognitively know how to do something doesn't mean we empirically have the ability at that stage so what I mean is just because we think like we've learned it mentally, like in our brain, we kind of know what the steps are to take it doesn't necessarily mean our motor skills, like our hands need time to catch up to our brain. So, you know, often that just means trying something, letting it sit for a while and then going back and uh, re looking at it and trying again. So I hope that makes sense. But now we're just uh, kind of, so you can see here this, that this is an old um, sketchbook, which I've showed before. And just the shadow uh, behind that little crest there with the rose in it. So I'm gonna create, I kind of was inspired to do this um, on this page. And we're gonna sort of create something like that um, with the colors we're using today. So I'm just going to let you watch this part um, and I just wanted to kind of explain something. I think that I will probably delete this, like mute this section, um, you know, on YouTube. I don't think in the future, five years from now, people need to kind of hear this, but um, I just wanted to explain why I kind of haven't been, been here. You know, I know that a lot of you really look forward to the videos and I just don't want you to um, think that like because I'm uploading these really sort of beautiful and serene videos that I think by any stretch that life is like this or that it, you know, it isn't hard. So um, last week I couldn't upload anymore just because I end I've had some back problems for a few years and I ended up back on crutches um, and I just wasn't able to get more done 
it's not something I want you to worry about. I, you know, I, I'm just putting things into place. I've got to do my sort of restorative exercises more and things like that. But, um, you know, this year has been a hard one for everyone with everything that's going on. And certainly we have, you know, been no exception. We've had um, also like, you know, along with all those things, we've had a hurricane and power outages, uh, a burglary. We've had quite a lot of things. So it was pretty, we, we've, we've definitely had our fair share of, of hardship this year. And I, 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 I only say this because I just don't want you to think, you know, I really do want to put out these beautiful videos and I want everyone to feel um, restful and peaceful and relaxed and, and sort of have a respite because I do understand how difficult it has been this year. And I really want to be able to offer that. I love, um, you know, I appreciate and love getting snippets into your guys' life and um, I certainly just, I really love the sort of the community that we've developed here on the channel and the, all of your wonderful comments, they're, they're so appreciated. And so I just don't want you to think like I've forgotten about you or anything like that. I am doing everything in my power to um, make sure I can keep going on the channel and you know like I've done this channel for nearly seven months and I mean sometimes I'm spending more than 30 hours a week on it and it's not monetized or anything like that so sometimes I, I you know I am trying to figure out ways that, that the channel can support itself and yeah I am going as fast as I can so there is a 20% off um, just a shameless bug here there is a 20% off all printables in my shop till Saturday um, I really do appreciate if you want to um, use the affiliate link from Jackson's uh, so this is something I was thinking about um, maybe using as the shadow so this is just a little glass uh, jar from my great-grandmother so I actually I'll, I'll do a blog post about her she was a really special lady and she did have a hard life but she 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 bore it really well she was really a gentle and kind soul so we will be using this vine as well for the next video but um, yeah I, I really loved doing this series as well I hope you guys enjoyed it and I don't mean to sort of um, I, you know, I don't want the this to be a difficult video, but I just wanted to let you know um, that I haven't forgotten about you. And I, I also think, so I'm going to start putting a few little studies, a few little um, bits of artwork in the Etsy shop as well that kind of combine with some of the videos that we're doing. Next year I really want to be able to have some time to create some really some larger pieces and things that I am thinking about so I thought it would be nice this year to kind of finish up just with some um, small artworks and some floral studies. You can see the one on the left is my favourite and the one on the right is my sister's favourite so um, those are available as well. And speaking of my sister, something exciting, we have been talking about and working on some collaboration video ideas. So she's on TikTok and she kind of does animal videos and she's got quite a few followers over there and some of her videos have more than a million views. So she she does quite well on TikTok. Um, meanwhile, me struggling along on YouTube, but she's coming over to YouTube and we're thinking of like some maybe art um art store you know videos or like um going into new york i don't know we're, we're trying to figure it out so hopefully some fun and exciting videos from that collab will be coming soon as well she's so funny i think you guys will really love her so that is all for today um i will hopefully be back on saturday with the part three of the painting shadows and then next week we will 
swatch the palette and do a whole video on how to not overwork paintings and I'll show you some older like some photos and then the works when I did overwork them and some of my top tips for kind of how not to do that and we might do an example of I've actually got an idea of a painting I, I want to try so we might use that as an example in that video okay well I will finish it here and I hope you have had a really nice week so far and sending all the best from our garden to yours bye